Having been a urologist and a men's health specialist for the last couple of decades, I've counseled thousands of men through the journey of uh, diagnosing prostate cancer. One of the areas that has evolved significantly during this time is the process of performing a prostate biopsy. Still, as of the time of this recording, which is early 2025, the cornerstone of how we achieve a prostate cancer diagnosis is by obtaining a tissue sample or performing a prostate biopsy. My name is Dr. Charles Schubert. I'm a urologist and the director of the Prostate Clinic. In this video, I wanted to highlight for you some of the evolution that we've seen in how we go about obtaining a tissue sample. Please, if you get value from this video, do subscribe to our channel. Please like the video. It gives us important feedback and helps us uh, grow the channel. So if we look at a uh, prostate biopsy and we look at how that was done historically. So if we go back probably just over 15 years ago, we did not have MRI scans. We did not have PSMA PET scans. Those two scans basically are specialized instruments that allow us to get a detailed image of the prostate and try to work out the relative risk that someone has prostate cancer. Not only do they give us a relative risk of someone having the disease, we also get an image so we know where in the prostate a particular lesion may be, how big it is, and its particular orientation. Obviously, that can help significantly when we are trying to target a, a particular spot within the prostate and determine if someone has prostate cancer or not. So if we take a step back and go back 15 years ago, the only tool that we had to try and diagnose prostate cancer was a blood test, a PSA test, and this was done in combination with the prostate exam. If someone had an elevated PSA or if someone had an abnormal examination, either of those two characteristics would then lead us to perform a prostate biopsy. And to be crude, that biopsy in essence was performed in a blind fashion, which is to say we had no idea if there actually was a tar target lesion within the prostate. And if there was a lesion, we certainly had no idea within the gland where it was. As a bit of a uh, background, the prostate is in a poorly accessible part of the body. It is located between the pelvic floor and the base of the bladder, and it is in the shape of a donut. There's a central tube through which men pee, and the majority of abnormal growths or prostate cancers that we see tend to arise in the outer part of the prostate. When we do the prostate exam, we can feel the outer part or the shell of the prostate, but only on the posterior aspect, only on the back side of the prostate. We cannot feel around the edges and we cannot feel the front of the prostate, clearly a limitation. So as I said, if there was an abnormality of the examination or if the blood test was high, men would proceed on with a biopsy. That was a transrectal ultrasound guided biopsy of the prostate. Now, depending on where you're watching in the world will influence uh, the type of biopsy that men have. So for example, in North America, men traditionally have had transrectal biopsies and in many centers in North America still do have transrectal biopsies. And these are done for the mainstay under local anesthetic in an office. In the UK, for example, there has been an evolution of doing transrectal biopsies through to transperineal biopsies. And I'll get into the particulars of a transperineal biopsy later on in this video. Here in Australia, where I'm shooting this video and where the prostate clinic is, which is located on the Gold Coast in Queensland, biopsies now are all done in a transperineal fashion, which means that the needle is placed through the skin into the prostate. That has been a change since around 2010. Prior to that, all biopsies were done transrectally. So one of the challenges with a transrectal biopsy is that the needle is placed through the bowel. And so there's a needle placed through the bowel into the prostate to try and obtain a tissue sample. And as you can imagine, one of the main complications with this process is the risk of infection. 
Now, the, the reported incidence of infections uh, was in the order of around 2%, but clinical experience indicates that the probability of an infection can be as high as around 6 to 7% after people have a transrectal biopsy. So to summarize, done usually in an outpatient setting, done under local anesthetic, a, an ultrasound probe is placed through the back passage to facilitate visualization of the prostate. The needle is then guided via the ultrasound to obtain random samples inside the prostate. There was a term called sextant biopsies, which in essence meant that in six different places within the prostate, tissue was obtained. And that really was guided by where we knew the majority of prostate cancers arose. And so we would sample the common areas where prostate cancer arose and effectively hope for the best. One of the challenges with that approach is that if the biopsy is negative, we didn't know if the biopsy was negative because the biopsy had missed the spot, or we didn't know if actually there was no cancer to sample. When men have a biopsy, one of the trade-offs is that following a biopsy, we can see transient elevations in the PSA or the blood test that can make monitoring a PSA after a biopsy challenging. As I said, in my practice from 2010, we moved from doing a transrectal biopsy to performing a transperineal biopsy. And the aim of doing it this way was to significantly reduce the probability of an infection after a biopsy. And touch wood, in, in my experience of having transitioned from transrectal biopsies through to transperineal or transcutaneous biopsies, we have not seen a single case of infection in now around 15 years. So a big advantage to the transperineal very, very low risk. I will never say zero because it may happen at one stage, but certainly in my experience, I've not seen an infection after a transperineal prostate biopsy. So that's a, that's a big plus. A potential downside, if you compare the way biopsies are done here to the way they're done in the United States, is that in Australia, uh, men have an anesthetic. We have, we have better access to in-hospital facilities and in Australia, every man who has a biopsy has uh, a general anaesthetic, so he's asleep during that process. In the States, as I said, the majority of men are managed as outpatients, so it tends to be done in the urologist's office. They're awake, they have local anaesthetic, but as I say, they're not asleep during that process. From around 2012, from around 2012, we have had the advent of an MRI scan. So it's called a multiparametric a multiparametric prostate MRI. What that basically means is that we look at different aspects to the MRI scan to get a, an assessment of prostate cancer risk, and not only risk, but we also assess whether or not there is a target lesion within the prostate, and if it is, wh where it is. So we get a mud map of where a potential spot might be. Now, the 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 mainstream or the widespread use of an MRI scan has really picked up since there was a landmark study that uh, was performed at the Wesley Hospital in Brisbane, Queensland, that was performed in around 2012, 2013, that really highlighted the benefit of these scans. In Australia now, MRI scans are reimbursed if men fulfill certain criteria Effectively, that means that Medicare, which is our government-sponsored healthcare system, uh, will pay for men to have an MRI scan, as I say, if they fulfill certain criteria. And then that gives us an assessment if there's a spot and where it is. Moving beyond then just a standard transperineal uh, biopsy is the advent of something called cognitive fusion. Cognitive fusion basically means that your treating urologist would have a laptop and the laptop in theater would provide him an image of where a particular spot was and he or she would look at those scans, they'd work out in their mind's eye where they thought that spot was and they would correlate it with a real-time transrectal ultrasound image and in their mind would try and fuse those two images and place a needle through the skin into the prostate with a view that they find that particular target lesion.
Okay, so if I summarize thus far, effectively a transrectal biopsy with no image guidance, a transition from transrectal through to transperineal, a transition from simple transperineal to cognitive fusion where we had image guided biopsy. And the next step beyond that was fusion between a previously obtained MRI image and also a real time ultrasound image. And there are different tools for doing that, but these are MRI ultrasound fusion softwares. That is a, we use a particular version of that here at the prostate clinic to try and improve the accuracy of the biopsies that we do. Again, it's done in hospital whilst a man is asleep. A transrectal probe is placed, or so an ultrasound probe placed through the bowel to allow us real time visualization of the prostate. And we have a tool that previously has obtained an MRI image and that is fused or correlated on top of superimposed with a real time ultrasound image. That allows us a better degree of accuracy to try and ensure that we hit a particular spot. It should be noted that even with this significant evolution in how we go about a prostate cancer diagnosis, uh, achieving a diagnosis, nothing is foolproof. And every step along the way, whether it's a PSA test, whether it's an MRI scan, whether it's a biopsy, through all of those processes, there is always the potential for a degree of error. But what we have seen over the last decade to the last 15 years is a significant improvement in processing and how we do things with a view that we perform fewer negative biopsies, meaning that those people that do have a biopsy really do need to have a biopsy on the basis of higher level evidence, such as an MRI scan, uh, and that we can more predictably, more reliably hit a particular spot in the prostate. I hope you found this uh, video beneficial. We have other videos on our channel that look at all things prostate. Uh, please have a look at them. If you do have questions or comments, or if you've been through a process of a biopsy or someone that you know has been through that process and you have a comment you'd like to share, please leave it with us. Thanks again.